So my name is Grant Timmerman. I'm a developer, platform engineer, in Google Cloud Platform. Previously, I led open source for G Suite APIs. And in particular, I love Node, GitHub, and I play the alto sax in my spare time. So the proposed agenda for today is first, uh, what is functions as a service? Uh, what is the difference between functions and microservices? Uh, writing Google Cloud Functions. Um, and then this new thing, uh, the Functions Framework, uh, you might have heard of it. It's an open source platform that powers Google Cloud Functions for Node. And then a couple of quick demos. So first, uh, when you're thinking about serverless, um, like uh, we're talking about Google Cloud Functions and being able to develop functions on the fly. So what is Functions as a Service? Well, so Functions as a Service is on-demand in infrastructure for executing your code. As Kevin said, it's where you can just solely focus on your application rather than having to worry about the infrastructure that powers it. So traditionally, you have servers where you have to maintain your hardware, you have maintenance, spare parts, you have staff, DevOps, you have server rooms, you have to worry about electricity, cooling, and you might have some idle time with these servers, uh, and you might have to put, patch your servers and uh, patch your hardware. And uh, you also have to over-provision if you have traffic spikes uh, in case it's Black Friday or, or you need to make sure that uh, your load is kept. And so this can cost a lot of money and cost a lot of time, something that you don't want to do. Well, so why do we really think about servers? And why can't we just focus on our core application, what we're good at. Why can't we let Google do the hard part? Well, so that's where our functions as a service comes in. So it's part of the serverless movement, and it's where your logic is written by the application developer, runs uh, in a managed stateless computing container, and you have special triggers like HTTP, pub subtopics, or a Google Cloud storage upload um, that is able to trigger your function. It's ephemeral, so that means your function uh, invocation, it won't have global state, and it's also managed by a third party. So serverless, uh, Google Cloud Functions, is a serverless environment to build and connect services with code. Basically, a function is emitted, uh, an event is emitted, a function is triggered, and your code is executed. Uh, you can trigger HTTP functions from all sorts of environments, also from Drive, Calendar, Gmail, and, and Maps. Or you can have your background functions uh, trigger from Google Cloud Storage, Stack Driver, Cloud PubSub, Firebase, et cetera. Fourth is that uh, it's managed. So your uh, cloud function might be running in one of Google's data centers, one of these racks. You don't really need to worry about where it's being run. So Deep Capita uh, stated that uh, Google Cloud Functions is really useful for the New York Times. So Google Cloud serverless platforms allows us to focus on building products, features, without having to worry about provisioning, scaling, and configuration management for the underlying infrastructure. The tools and abstractions have been a game changer, allowing teams to iterate and scale with ease. Now on to uh, what's the difference between monoliths and microservices? Well, so traditionally, with a monolith, you have a single application. It's one giant app. Uh, you deploy all at once. And fundamentally, there's different uh, pieces of logic. You might have a couple databases, a couple application uh, pieces of logic. And the idea of microservices is uh, to really break away this monolithic application and configure uh, your points of entry which might be anything from Google Cloud Storage uploads, HTTP triggers, pop sub events, and be able to trigger these independently. So writing functions in, in Google Cloud Functions. Well, so for writing functions, you can specify a, a request URL, which might be something like this, um, and provide a body. Uh, so you can just provide JSON, which could be grant. Um, and in the response, you'll just get uh, 200 OK, and maybe you'll get a response body of Hello Grant. Uh, Cloud Functions supports these runtimes. 
So node 6, 8, and 10. Uh, Python 3.7, Go 1.11, and 1.12 alpha, as well as Java 8. Behind the scenes, we have uh, an HTTP server endpoint. Uh, we provide a fully qualified domain, an SSL certificate, auto-scaling as your uh, users hit your function more often. And we also integrate with Stackdriver logging and Stackdriver error reporting. You can deploy from the Cloud Console UI or from the command line. On to uh, languages and the CLI. Well, so for Node, uh, a Google Cloud function will look something like this. It's your typical uh, node where you can export a uh, variable. Uh, this is uh, just hello world. And we're powering this through uh, Express 4. And you can simply just res.setus200 and send the message. Python is pretty similar. It uses Flask. And you can parse the args if you want and just return a string uh, hello world. And for Go, uh, we use the native uh, HTTP client. And you can uh, send your response uh, right natively in Go. You can deploy Google Cloud Functions from the CLI and do everything from calling functions, listing all your functions, deploying, deleting, and listing all the event types. Uh, there's some advanced options for the CLI uh, that allows you to specify different runtimes, um, different memory allocations up to uh, two gigabytes, um, a number of retries in case your function fails. Uh, and you can also specify that this function will run as a certain uh, service account. Timeouts, uh, environment variables, triggers, et cetera. And you can learn more at uh, cloud.google.com slash functions. Now, uh, I'm really excited to talk about this part. This is uh, something that I've been working on with Slavic and, and the Google Cloud Functions team. Uh, this is the func functions framework. So what is the functions framework? Well, it's really uh, a new underlying backbone for Google Cloud Functions. It's an open source project. It's under github.com slash Google Cloud Platform slash functions framework. And it enables for local development of your code. If you're uh, wishing to not spend uh, 30 to 60 seconds to wait for your fu functions to deploy, you can simply locally install the functions framework and have the same environment that's used with uh, Google Cloud Functions for at least for Node 10 right now. And we also provide a transparent Zember. And so you can pin your function framework on a specific version so that you know that your function is going to run in the same environment even if you uh, gcloud functions push again. Uh, inside the functions framework, what does it do? Well, so it does a light transformation of your code. First, loads the, core, the source code. Um, it creates a light uh, HTTP server, in this case, uh, Express 4 for a node. And it creates uh, a route for your requ request. There's a preset uh, Docker file you can see on the GitHub repo. And we uh, spin up container instances in response to increased demand. Cool. Now I have a couple demos that I would love to show you. So first here we have uh, our Google Cloud Platform project where I have deployed a function called BTC. A simple way uh, to invoke a function is just to call the uh, URL. And here I actually have a function deployed uh, that's calling the Coinbase API and getting uh, the current Bitcoin price at a certain date. So this, in 2017, you could buy a single Bitcoin for uh, $2,100. See in 2019, it's increased to 5,400. Let's go uh, try to uh, run this locally, though. Um, so with a new functions framework, we can uh, simply start the functions framework. And so this is using the local npm package uh, and just serving a local uh, local host URL, and I have uh, the query parameters set up here, and it's really exactly the same, same code. 
So you can see in 2016, et cetera, and the price changes. We can also, instead of uh, powering our functions locally, um, let's say we want to go and test uh, against um, our deployed version. Also, rather than having to go to Chrome, maybe we want, we want to do this from the terminal. We can just uh, use gcloud and call the function, and it'll execute and provide the data right uh, then and there. Let's say uh, you have a Google Sheet, and you want to uh, use Google Cloud Functions to power some of the data processing. Well, I think uh, Google Sheets is a very uh, flexible UI, and it's really powerful when you can combine uh, Google Cloud Functions and Google Sheets. So here I've created a custom function called btccf. Uh, it takes in a date, and you can simply press Enter. And this will call a Cloud Function, uh, which we just deployed. And uh, it'll return the exact uh, body response from that. So uh, the powerful part about Google Sheets is that you can simply just drag and drop or, or click the bottom right corner. And you can see there's uh, all these prices for all these dates. And it's powered by Google Cloud Functions. So how does this work, you might ask? Well, uh, so we can go to Tools and then Script Editor. And we have some uh, lightweight uh, app script code. Basically, we uh, provide uh, the date in this format. And then we do a URL fetch, uh, which is just a fetch to this uh, cloud endpoint. And then we parse the JSON, and we just want the mount. And so we just return that. So that's really cool. Uh, let's see. Um, then. Uh, so those are uh, three different ways in which you can call uh, your cloud function, from the command line, from a browser, and from Google Sheets. Cool. So in summary, we showed uh, what functions as a service is, uh, functions versus microservices, running Google Cloud Functions, the open source function framework, and a demo of three ways in which you can call Cloud Functions. Uh, you can learn more about the Functions Framework at git.io uh, slash gcf dash functions framework, FF. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Grant Timmerman. I would love if you have any questions to tweet at me at Grant Timmerman. Thank you. <laughs>